All we need to do is add in the wheel. Um, but the wheel needs to rotate. The wheel does need to spin. So w obviously this wheel needs to rotate that way, but it also needs to be rotated for steering, which doesn't seem to be enough controls, because as we rotate it that way, how can we also rotate it? Or see, it just doesn't work. Well, the simple fix for that is it don't have enough transform nodes. The wheel has its own transform nodes, but we need another set of transform nodes so that we can steer it left to right. We're going to do that with another group. We're going to add a group. So control G allows us to add a group, and you can see the pivot for the group has now gone up to the world origin. So press and hold D. Let's move that out, and then I'm just going to V-snap that. in that direction. And we can see that we've now got the group pivot set to just behind the wheel so that we could steer the wheel. There we go. That's the group. And if we look at this in the hypergraph, we can see that we now have a group which allows us to steer the wheel and a wheel which will then be able to rotate. So now we just need to fix up these last items. Uh, we're going to actually use the hypergraph again because we need to select the group. Now you could select the wheel and press the up arrow to select the group. That's one way of doing it. I prefer to just to make sure I've got the right object. So we're going to drive the translate of the group because the, the wheel is a child of this group. If we move the group, the child will come along for the ride. So all we need to do is make sure that this is going to be the constrainer. I'm going to press Q to remove my manipulator. And shift select my constrainee, which we don't want the wheel, we want the wheel group. And then I'm going to make sure that that group is translated as we move the control object. And in fact, we want to do a translate and rotate. So I'm going to add a parent constraint this time, so I can control the translate and rotate. Okay, so now if I was to select the control object, I can move that up and down. That's going to drive the group. The group will therefore take the wheel along for the ride. And if we bring up the rotate tool, we can rotate that, but we're not affecting the rest of the model. We're just affecting that group. So there you have it. What remains then is to just do some final tidy up. We've got a, a control object here, and we've got a lot of geometry as well. And obviously, the animator can select the geometry and select these locators, and that's just not very helpful. Um, selecting locators might be useful. You may have locators elsewhere on your model that you want to access, so you don't necessarily want to switch them off by display or stopping the display of the locators. So I'm going to select my locator and change its visibility to off. That's now no longer visible. And I'm going to do the same with the other locator. So now we can no longer see the locators, but we can still select all of the geometry. Well, the easiest way to do this is to create a, a new layer. Let's call it the geometry layer. Save that. And if we go into our hypergraph, we'll find now that it's very easy to select all of our geometry just by selecting that top group and add it to our layer. We can then set our layer to reference. So now we can no longer select anything except the controls. And if we needed to find a control, we know it would be in the control group. If we needed to find our rig, it would be in the rig group. And if we need to find a geometry, it would be in our geometry group. The final stage would be just to tidy up your channel box. Here we have a control that we obviously don't want to rotate, and we certainly don't want to allow anyone to scale, and really we don't want to allow them to switch it on and off. So we can lock and hide those attributes. We can then select this one down here. Again, we certainly don't want them to scale it. We can lock and hide that. Um, we do want to translate in Y. We might not want them to translate in X and Z. So I'm going to select those. That was a control to select the other object. Lock and hide those. Uh, we do want them to be able to rotate that in Z so that we can steer the wheel. So let's lock and hide those attributes. So now we have a very clean rig, fully operational. 
Once again, my name is Steve Hughes. I hope you found this tutorial useful and that it will help you with your future research.